I've looked at plenty of file managers on this channel. Things like Ranger, LF, Hunter, NNN, FFF, VIFM, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And I could probably just do nothing but file manager videos and never run out of content. And today is one of those days. So we're looking at something that is a little bit weird. I don't know if I'd recommend actually running this file manager, but it's so weird that I felt like I still had to do a video on it. So this is a project called fm.org and as the name would suggest it's a file manager written in orc and i don't just mean oh it calls orc from shell script from time to time no that's not what i mean i mean every single line of this project is written in orc script and it works surprisingly well we're going to get what you would expect from any sort of normal terminal file manager if we go and run fm.org, which I'd recommend changing the name of because writing that out every single time is going to be a little bit annoying. This is what it looks like. We can move up and down throughout the file manager by using the J and the K keys, or if you don't like using Vim keys, the option to use arrow keys is also supported. So we can go into a folder by pressing L or right. Let's say we go into the contour folder, and then if we go over a file, pressing right on that again is going to go and open that up. Now, the way this opens stuff up is going to be based on what you have set up with XDG open. It's not going to have a separate config just for this application. I know most file managers do have that, but this is still in a fairly minimal state. So if we quit out of the file, it's going to take us back to the file manager. Now, one thing you'll notice is parts of the interface aren't actually being redrawn properly. So if you resize your terminal window and anything gets cut off, it's not actually going to automatically fix that when the terminal actually does fit the rest of the screen. It's not a big deal. Those buttons continue to function. And if we go down to the bottom of this list, it is going to redraw the screen. But it is something to keep in mind. So if we go and make it like this, for example, and then uh, get rid of those, most of the interface is just completely gone now. But we can actually scroll through the list and it will force a redraw at some point. But it's just something to keep in mind. There's one thing you may have noticed just before. So if we go down to the bottom of the list, it's then going to go to the next page of the list. So this file manager is a page to file manager rather than something like, say, LF, for example, where as you scroll down the screen, it's going to go and load things in as you're actually scrolling. Personally, I prefer stuff loading like this rather than having distinct pages, but it's not a big deal and I certainly can get used to the pages. If we want to leave this folder, we can just go and press left and it'll take us out of that. Now, there is one thing in there that you may have noticed that you probably haven't seen in many other file managers. So it doesn't go and hide the dot slash and the dot dot slash. So dot slash basically means the current directory and dot dot slash means the parent directory. So what's going to happen if we try to open up dot slash? Well, what it's going to do is quit out of the application and actually CD us into that location. I think this is actually a really cool feature and I kind of wish more file managers did that. Now, as for the dot dot slash, this one frankly doesn't need to be here because what it's going to do is just take you back up to the parent directory. There's no like special operation you can do with it. That's all it does. So really, it doesn't need to be there. I guess it's just there for the sake of completeness. One thing that does bother me about this is, unlike a lot of other file managers where you can go and press enter on a file or write, and they're both going to go and open it, if we go and press enter on something, that isn't actually going to do anything. You have to press right on it. It wouldn't be that difficult to make them both work, but just note that that is missing. I mentioned the hotkeys up the top before. Basically, these are all the actions that exist within the application. One thing that I should have mentioned before, though, is if we go and force position when we need a refresh, there actually is a refresh button, and pressing that is going to redraw the interface. So you don't always have to go and, like, go down to the next page of the list, but sometimes doing that is going to be easier if you are going to do that anyway. There's a couple of fairly useful buttons up there. So N and P will let you cycle through the pages. So N is going to go to the next page, and and then P is going to go to the previous page. Now, with the top and the bottom keys, T and B, they don't act the way that I would like them to act. 
So what I had expected is top would go to the top of the page and B would go to the bottom of the page. What it actually does is B goes to the bottom of the directory and T goes to the top of it. Now, I like having that feature there, absolutely. I would also like the other feature as well, maybe on something like capital T and capital B. Speaking of jumping around though, we can go and jump directly to a file. So every single file and folder inside of this list has a number assigned to it. If we want to go and jump directly to that thing, let's say for example the, uh, the scripts folder. If I go and type in 15 and then press enter, it's going to go and take us directly into that thing. If it was a file instead, it would have tried to open up that file. In other file managers, the way that I'm used to that working is instead of jumping directly into that thing, it's instead going to go and take you to that thing and then you can choose to go into it. So if it's over, say, a file, for example, you don't go and open up that file when you don't mean to do so. I like this being an option, but like with what I said before, I would like the other method to be an option as well. Another thing we can do is jump directly to a page. So as you can see down the bottom here, it shows the total number of pages. And to jump to a page, basically what we need to do is include the page number, let's say page three, and then capital G, and then if we press enter, it'll jump us to that page. Now searching works in a way that I'm not exactly a big fan of, but I understand the benefit of it. So if we go and press slash, and let's say I search for something like TO, that's gonna work like most searches do, but instead of something like LF, when we search for something, it'll keep the entire list being there, and then you can actually jump between things. In this case, the only thing that's going to show you are things that actually match the search. In this case, these four results. And this isn't made clear by the application, but if you want to get rid of the search, basically what you need to do is go and do a refresh. It would be nice to actually change what's up the top here when you actually go into a search to say that's what it does, but it doesn't do that for now. You might be wondering about this action button here. The reason why I left it to the end is because in its current state, it doesn't really do that much. So if we go and press A, we have a history and open in button. So Basically what history is going to do is show us a list of directories we've been to with this file manager. And this works basically the same way as being in a directory. So I can jump to different pages, I can search for elements, I can jump directly to an element. And then if we go into any of these directories, it's actually going to go and basically jump us to that directory. Now as for the open in, unless I'm missing something, opening this up doesn't actually do anything. So I'm guessing that it hasn't been properly implemented yet or maybe there's something missing that isn't documented from what i know it doesn't do anything so there's obviously a lot of things missing from this file manager the reason why i didn't talk about sorting is because currently there is no way to do sorting basically you're going to be stuck with i believe the ordering is numbers uppercase lowercase symbols but i might be mistaken about that that's basically all you're going to get though. You can't do things like creating files, deleting files, copying, moving. Maybe at some point the developer will actually add those features in, but right now what this file manager is basically is a proof of concept more than anything else. I didn't even know that you could respond to keyboard events with ORC. I had no idea there was a thing. And even though the syntax for ORC is questionable at best, what this shows is ORC is a really, really powerful language. Sure, it's not going to be the quickest thing out there, but you know the ORC is going to be available on every single Unix system out there. As long as you are doing stuff in the POSIX way, this application is going to run fine without having to do any sort of tweaking. And I'm not saying that you should go and write a file manager in ORC. Absolutely not. That's, that's insane. What I am saying, though, is that if you need to do something where ORC actually does make sense as the language, if you're trying to do it like a little bit of string parsing, for example, there's no reason to just not go and use ORC. As an application, things like Ranger, LF, VIFM, NNN, XPLR, Hunter, all of those file managers are better file managers. But one of the things I struggled to do when I was doing my series that I did for like two episodes about learning ORC is I always had trouble actually coming up with examples. I could obviously talk about directly using the features, but I was having trouble coming up with ways to practically use the example. And if you want a good example of what you could do with ORC, 
this project really does fit the bill. And for the record, the guy who made this file manager also made D-Menu FM, basically turning D-Menu into a file manager. So I think this guy just likes to make weird file managers that no one should probably actually use, but it's cool nonetheless that they do exist. Let me know your thoughts on the application in the comment section down below. Knowing my audience, I guarantee there's going to be at least one person who says they're going to use this. I don't know if I'm going to believe you if you say that, but if you are using it, um, hey, that, that's cool. Let me know how that experience is going. I don't know why you're suffering through that, but it is cool nonetheless. So I think that's it for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to... Yoa, Kim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Pity, D, Stephen, T, U, through Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you would like to support my work, there'll be links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pair, that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robs and Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>